Welcome to My DMX 2.0, a powerful and easy to use DMX lighting control app for PC and Mac. This very special video manual will guide you through using the software. My DMX 2.0 has been rebuilt from the ground up. In this video, we will give an overview of the most important new features. Before we start, make sure the interface is connected and not on demo mode, and make sure you have the latest update. The software features a new design which includes new icons, faders, colors, and preset components allowing for a quicker and more pleasant workflow. Setup tab. To begin with, the software needs to be told which lighting fixtures are being used. Select your lighting fixture from a list of manufacturers on the left. If you do not see your lighting fixture in the list, contact ADJ Customer Support and we'll be happy to build a profile for you. We're going to go with the Mega Series since we're using three Mega Part profiles. Go to your ADJ file, head down to Mega Series. We have a Mega Part profile, so here we go. Now we have several modes in our Mega Part profile. You could go 7 channel, you could go 6 channel, so on and so forth. We're going to go with three channel modes since we're just using red, green, and blue at this time. We're going to select our number of fixtures, which is three. We're now going to hit the patch button. As you can see, our three fixtures are now here in the universe. Addressing your lighting fixture. Each lighting fixture must be given a unique number or address. The address is normally set via a LED display or dip switch on the actual lighting fixture. Hover over a fixture to know the address and click the fixture to see the dip switches required to set this address. For example, this lighting fixture is set to address 7, channel 3. If you have dip switches, you could see here that your dip switches will have to be set to 1, 2, and 3 up, and the rest of them will be down. We're going to take our first megabar profile and we're going to address that light. Channel 3 and it will be set at A001. On the second Megapart profile, we're going to go ahead and set that to channel 3 and use the address of A004. On our third and final Megapart profile, we're going to set that to channel 3 and we're going to start our DMX address at A007. Once again, don't forget to put a DMX terminator at the end of your daisy chain. Page 8, Editor tab. Controlling channels. The editor is where all the lighting programming is made. Drag a fader with the mouse to change the value. To change the value of the same channel type on every fixture, hold shift. For example, to change the color of every fixture, hold shift and move the color fader. Notice that the DMX output value is displayed at the top of the fader. My DMX 2.0 features a range of preset components to help you quickly adjust the channel. To access the component, Click at the top of the channel where the preset color is displayed. Clicking on the cursor will allow you to drag it around the color wheel. Notice that the RGB values are shown. Page 9. Scenes and Steps All programming is made with scenes and steps. A step is a static look which contains one value for each channel. Several steps make up a scene. Scenes can be created by clicking the top left icon in the scene area. Once values have been set, steps can be created here. When a new step is created, all faders are set to zero. To copy the current step's values, click here. Double click the fade time, wait time, or dimmer value to modify. To modify several steps at the same time, hold control on your PC or command on your Mac to select multiple steps. To select a range of steps, select the first step of the range, hold shift, and then select the final step of the range. You can preview your scene by clicking the play button. Page 10. Scene settings. Double click a property to edit. For example, to change the name of a scene, first, double click the name. Second, type the new name. Third, press the return key. Page 10. Live tab. The live tab is where you run your show. Click a scene to activate it. If you want your scene to listen to the loop and next properties, make sure that the play button is selected here. It is possible to change the color of a scene by right clicking the scene. Page 11, Live Edits. It is possible to overwrite scenes by moving the faders. There are two options, LTP, which stands for Latest Takes Priority, the fader value will overwrite the scene, or HTP, Highest Takes Priority. 
If the fader value is higher than the value within the activated scene, it will overwrite the scene. To set up LTP or HTP, make sure that it is enabled within the user options menu and then click the auto button at the bottom of the channel you want to overwrite. Page 12, Scene Builder, Arranging Fixtures. The Scene Builder allows you to quickly and easily build advanced scenes and create effects without the need to set each fader and step manually. It replaces the effects generator and color manager in the previous software version. Create a new scene and click here to open the Scene Builder. Selection Mode. When the Scene Builder is open, you will see your lighting fixtures on the left. Each square represents a lighting fixture. Click and drag the squares to position the lighting fixtures. Hold Control on your PC, Command on your Mac to select multiple fixtures. There are three tools to help with fixture selection. Rectangle. Draw a rectangle around the fixtures to select. Lasso. Draw a perimeter around the set of fixtures to select the fixtures within the chosen parameter. Drag over. Any fixtures with a drawn shape will be selected. Notice that as the fixtures are selected, a number appears. This is the order in which any curve or linear fan effect will be created. Page 13. Groups can be created to help quick recall of fixture selections. To create a group, select the fixtures to be included inside the group and then select the plus button. Matrixes. Click here to create a matrix. My DMX 2.0 will automatically position your lighting fixtures into a matrix. Select the arrow or define the custom width and height of the matrix. Controlling fixtures. Once you have selected the lighting fixtures you wish to control, all common presets will be shown here. To view only the presets of a particular fixture type, select the appropriate tab. If you have no fixtures selected, you can draw a preset onto a fixture. First, select the pen tool. Second, select the presets you want to change. Third, click on the fixtures you want to update. The color wheel. The color wheel offers several ways to change the color. Click the cursor and drag around the color wheel to choose the color. Click on the color wheel to jump to one of the six preset colors. Click on the color wheel to drag up and down and move slowly around the color wheel. Select the center sections to modify the brightness and saturation. Click the center of the color wheel to choose a color with a standard color picker or insert RGB values. Page 15, XY Grid. The XY grid allows you to modify the pan tilt channels of a fixture. Beam on. Clicking the beam on button will enable the default preset of each selected fixture. For example, on a moving head, this may be shutter open, iris open, and dimmer 100%. Linear fan. The linear fan function allows you to define a range by selecting a start and end point. The preset range will then be applied across the selected lighting fixtures. This is a great way to create color gradients and position fans. Color Effect My DMX 2.0 features a powerful RGB color effects generator. To add an effect, select the Effects tab and click the Effects icon. Select Color Effect. A rectangle will appear in the upper left corner, playing a rainbow effect. Drag and drop this over your lighting fixtures. The effect can be resized by dragging the corners. To modify a color effect, Select the effect type and change the properties. It is possible to add many effects at the same time by simply choosing another effect from the menu. Position effects allow you to easily create movement patterns for scanners and moving head lighting fixtures. Select the fixtures you want to control, select position effect from the effects menu, and then select the starting shape. The shape can be altered by clicking on the point and dragging. Phasing will add a delay on each fixture. Page 18, Curve Effect. The Curve Effect tool allows you to apply a dimming curve to any channel. Select Curve Effect from the Effects menu and select the fixtures you wish to control. The Curve Effects can be stacked to create many interesting patterns. Generate an effect. You can remove an individual effect by clicking on the trash can icon. The whole effect can be cleared by selecting the cancel icon to the left of the tick icon. Select the tick icon to generate the effect.